What is up, YouTube? Welcome to the Ego Forestry Academy channel. Today, I want to talk to you about the importance of using those service species that are very vigorous and they just grow a lot better in your soil, your climate, current conditions. You know, we know everywhere in the world we're dealing with very degraded soils. Soils that were impoverished by bad use, soils that lost that topsoil layer, climates that are becoming more and more extreme. So, you know, rainfall is going, is getting to a point where distribution is just really bad, a lot worse than it was. And I'm going to give you a, a real example here of a plot that I did. And you're going to see it for yourself which species are actually doing the work of making this a better place. So let's take a look. Oh, if you haven't yet, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so that you're up to date with what we're doing. So check it out. This plot is about 63 days old or something like that. And after we planted, we, we planted it right after it had rained quite a bit, so the soil was very moist. Everything sprouted nicely without any rain because the soil was already moist. Then we went for about 40 days with no rain, and then we had 10 millimeters of rain. That's about four inches. And no, I mean, that's not four inches. That's uh, that's point two inches right 10 millimeters one centimeter now that's 0.4 inches yeah so 0.4 inches of rain I'm just trying to 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 get acquainted with uh with 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 the american units uh so 0.4 inches of rain and and then we went for another uh 15 days without rain and we had 50 millimeters of rain in one day that's about two inches of rain in one day so my placenta crops they suffered quite a lot uh, the corn suffered a lot it I'm honestly I'm surprised that some of the the plants are still alive but you can see that it was already getting kind of diseased, right? You can see that it's uh, the bottom leaves are a bit, uh, you know, they're thin. They've got this uh, yellowing here in the middle. They're burning a bit the, the tips. And then the new ones, because it rained a few days ago, look at how beautiful they look. So this goes to show that plants will respond very quickly to, to rain and to the release of nutrients and all that. Uh, but I cannot expect to grow to get anything from this corn anymore because it's uh, it's 60 days old, right? It should be almost releasing its flower, so I'm not getting anything from it. And then we've got the black beans. Uh, they suffered quite a bit as well. They're now flowering, but you know they had very little rain, so I cannot expect to get a decent harvest from it. I hope to at least get the my seeds back the seeds that i use so if i manage to get the seeds back that's already going to be a, a big success for me given the the conditions that we had but now let's look at the jack beans <laughs> look at the size of here's a jack bean the plant of jack beans and then the the black beans right on the side black beans jack beans check it out so that you, you know it's not a difference of perspective Look at the size of the difference in size. So who's doing more photosynthesis? Who's feeding microorganisms in this plot? My jack beans or is it my black beans? So this goes to show the importance of using these species. And I'm going to do something here for your amusement. I'm going to take one of these jack beans from the soil. It's a uh, I feel like I'm almost committing a crime by doing so, but I want to show you the root difference. It's even hard to take it out. Okay. 
feels like I'm I'm harvesting cassava. <laughs> Look at this. So this is the root of the jack beans. You can see the the nodules of rhizobium, right? These are, these are the nitrogen fixing bacteria. They form these nodules. And now the black beans. What a puny root system <laughs> when you compare both. <laughs> Look at this, guys. Look at this. Look at the difference. Who's improving the soil? There's no doubt, is there? <coughs> Sorry. So we have to use those plants that will grow regardless of the condition. Here's another one. My pigeon pea. It takes a while to grow and to start really producing organic matter, but it grows regardless of rain or not having rain. It's going to grow. You know, with very little water, it will grow. So my prickly pear. Look, it's sprouting nicely without rain. So we need those plants to, they are our guarantee of having a, a system that is enriching over time. So we need to have those, you know. You need to plant those species that you know that will grow in the plot regardless of what happens. And those that they actually focus all of their energy in improving the soil. Right, in, in making lots of photosynthesis and in feeding those bacteria in the soil. So this is what I wanted to show you. Remember to, to plant your cover crops, your vigorous, your service species. Never plant a system without them. Always have service species around your main crops. All right, so that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll keep you updated about this area. Uh, hopefully we're going to have some more rain uh, in, in a bit. And if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, check out our full agroforestry course. Here's a link, a card to the playlist. We have, a, it's divided into five modules. It's 25 lessons, over five hours of content. And if you want to support the channel, join our Patreon community. Not only are you going to be supporting us, but you're going to get access to a lot of more goodies. So. I think you're going to enjoy it. So I'm Felipe for the Agroforce Academy, and I'm signing out.